what is up guys before today's uh show i'd like to get honor uh my good friend anthony's uh sister anthony was on the show and we talked a little about his sister who was fighting cancer sadly she passed away hopefully now she is in a better place and she is not feeling any pain so but R.I.P. G. We got the legend, NY, um, Trey from NYK, Terry and Trey, one of the biggest Knicks content shows in the Knicks community. Oh, Luke, you're so, you're so nice. You're so nice. You mm -hmm. are who I come to for my knowledge because you are like a Knicks dictionary. I yeah, think I am. You know, I think you know everything there is to know about the Knicks. How, how, old, are, how old are you really? How how old I am? I'm, yeah. I'm 75. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're. Some, I think you're somewhere up there. That that I actually believe. That I actually believe. First off, like, what are your thoughts on the whole uh, NBA and uh, the whole uh, boycotting the games? You know. Well, I, I want to. I definitely want to chat about that quickly. But I but I do want to mention just really quickly um, because this happened um, a couple of days ago. But rest in peace to uh, John Thompson. Um, yes. From from RG. yeah, and you know, from Georgetown, such such a big influence on a lot of these really big guys back in the day, and not just with their basketball careers, but I think he was also very influential as a father figure, and sort of just teaching them about life, like a life coach as well. You yeah, know? like so, you see, so, Allen so, Iverson and yeah. Patrick Ewing has lots of respect for him, and yeah. Dike Dikembe Mutombo, Alonzo Mourning. So yeah, definitely had a lot to do with their careers. But uh, let's go get back to today and what we're dealing with, with um, I guess the Black Lives Matter and just being socially conscious of what's going on. You know, this is not a new thing for athletes to get involved in stuff like this and to make a protest and to make a stance about something. Um, you know, Colin Kaepernick sort of started a lot of the movement a couple of years ago. And then uh, Craig Hodges, who played with the Bulls back in the 90s, when they went to the White House, he wore a dashiki. And he was not allowed to give the president anything, but I think he gave the president's secretary a letter. And in that letter, he was just um, expressing, I guess, how difficult it was for Black people in this country to get ahead. And right after that, he never played basketball again. And so, you know, both him and Colin Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick felt the effects of sort of speaking up at a time where it wasn't like the fashionable thing to speak up or it wasn't like the thing to do. And, you know, he lost, he lost a lot of money because of it. He lost a lot of money because of it. And, and he was a really good player. He was, I think, I don't know if he was leading the league, but he was a three-point uh, shooter and was really, really good and, you know, won championships with the Bulls. So, you know, they... He didn't, after the Bulls let him go, no other team picked him up either. You know, I think everyone was really afraid to touch him. So they've made a, they've made a stance, right? They've uh, done a protest. And so what I want to see now is what are they asking for? What are they asking for? And how are they going to go about asking for it? So I want to yeah. see, I want I want to see what happens as a result of that. You know, these guys definitely have a voice because they play in the NBA and you know, sports brings everyone together. I met you because of sports, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sports brings, um, sports brings different demographics together, different social interests, political, religious, you know, people all can come and root for the same sports yeah, team. Like, yeah. So, so like, they actually have a really good platform to sort of set, to spread a message. Yeah, you know? like you see all of us in the Knicks community, we are, um, the Knicks brought us together in that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, you know, draft obviously is coming up. We've got the number yeah. eight pick. Yeah. Who do you want for us to pick at number eight? Uh, or, or, or do you want us to do something with that pick and not stay at number eight and yeah. do some finagling, do some shifting, uh, some, play some, move some chess pieces around? Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I preferably want to trade the pick for like a Joel Embiid, a Donovan Mitchell, or a Devin Booker, or if if we or trade up for a Lamelo Ball with the Hornets at number three, but okay. if we stay put, which is my worst case scenario, which is okay, uh -huh. it's okay, uh -huh. I'd pick Cole Anthony, and that's uh like beyond like 
no question, you pick Cole Anthony. He's the most talented guy. He, right. Though he might have the, a little injury history, uh, I think that's okay. And Cole Anthony is the guy that, like, he's a primary point guard. He's he's good. He's athletic. He's young. Yeah. Right. They're all young, but what, we do. Yeah, but we do. But we do need um, a point guard, right? Can you believe? Can yeah. you believe after all this time, we are still looking for a point guard? So. Oh no! When was the last good point guard we had? Uh, Marbury? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, exactly. So you know but the thing is with this. With him. Yeah. Well, there you go. With the, with this draft, you know there is no standout number one, two, and three pick. There isn't a person like Zion was for us last, well, not for us, but was in the league last year. So what I'm looking at, you know, I'm seeing quite a few different people. I'm sort of, uh, I, I was looking at Cole Anthony before, and I do still think he has great acceleration. He pushes the pace, obviously Greg Anthony's son, so that's good for us. But there's a few other people. Um, the NBA uh, mock draft has us getting Killian Hayes who's another French guy <laughs> who, um, I mean, I mean, he's, he's not French. He is from the United States, but grew up in France. He's a good mm -hmm. ball handler. He's left-handed. His shooting does need to improve. But I think like a lot of the European players has a really high uh, basketball IQ. Um, there's Tyrese Halliburton from Iowa State. Also really good work ethic. Yeah. Um, you know, he is an unselfish player. I really like to see when these young guys come in and they are able to really have the awareness of the rest of the team and see that it's not all about an ISO game because I think it's very easy to get caught up in that, especially in high school and in college. You're the star player. You you know, everyone's cheering for you. It's really easy to, to get caught up in, I'm going to the basket and I'm scoring or I'm dunking or I'm hitting the, you know, um, hitting threes. So it's nice to see young players that can see more than that and beyond just because, because listen, when they get to the NBA, they are not going to be the star player anymore. Right. So that's something they have to observe from, from that. Um, there's Obi Toppin, um, who yeah, has Obi. really good mobility, a lot of speed, explosive player. You know that the Knicks would love to see, we, we like explosive players. We like players that are flashy yeah. and have that explosiveness. Um, I think also, uh, I want to keep saying Kira, but it's Kyra. Kira, because we're also used to Kira from Death Note. <laughs> yeah. show, you remember the show Death Note? It was Kira, the Japanese yeah, was, guy. Yeah. So, but his name I is Kyra. Know, so, yeah. so, so Kyra Lewis from Alabama. Also really good speed, really good awareness, good rebounder. He is still really, really young and small. And because of that, he shies away from contact. So he has that yeah. uh, mobility, but he's not a big guy where he's going to run into someone. Right. But to me, that's going to come with, you know, once a lot of these guys are coming in at, you know, 19, 20, 21. So the next yeah. couple of years after that is when they start bulking up, they start eating right. And they start putting yeah. on size just naturally they're putting on size. So there's yeah. a lot of different options. There's a lot of options. Um, what do you think about though later on in the draft? Because I, it seems to me that the, better choices and the more value are actually between 15 and 30 in the draft. So what do, what do you yeah. think about later on well, in the draft? I haven't really done my uh, like work on that yet. I've really mm -hmm. been focused really on if we're staying put on the, at the right. eighth pick. I, um, I, I like, uh, um, Halvorin is okay, but mm -hmm. I just feel like there's no, like, he's not that standout player. Um, but Cole, there's no crazy standout player, but mm -hmm. Cole Anthony, I feel, is the closest to that. He'll right. bring back the excitement. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and he's from New York. Like, he's New York born. Yeah. He grew up on uh, under former Nick. Uh, former Nick, he, I think he really loves, like, that type of stuff. He, like, you see yeah. his attitude. He's, like, that guy that wants to take on the garden, take on right. New York. He has yeah. that uh, killer mentality, and also, uh, like, I feel Tibbs is good with, like, he did amazing with uh, Derrick Rose as a point right. guard. So that gives me right. tons of hope for a guy like Cole Anthony. Right. Um, you, know, you just mentioned Tibbs. So, obviously, we had this uh, huge head coach search looking yeah. for the right coach for us. How are you feeling about the pick? about us picking Tibbs and having Tibbs as our, as our new head coach. 
Me, me, uh, let me just mention that he is now, I think, the 14th head coach we've had in yeah, 20 seasons. Yeah, in 20 years. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I know. I'm, yeah. I'm very, uh, I'm very uh, happy about Tibbs. I, def I definitely, that was my first choice. Mm -hmm. Jason Kidd, like, I wanted him. Same with Mark Jackson and uh, who else they want? Uh, Mike Atkinson. Atkinson. No, right. I didn't want. I didn't want Atkinson. You didn't want uh, Atkinson. Yeah, I felt he was like he was kind of like a. He gave me a Fizdale vibe. I don't know what it was. Oh, okay. But look, but look at what he did. Look at what he did for the Nets. Don't you think that he did a pretty good job with the Nets? Yeah. Um. So here's the thing about the like the Nets and that. Um, like the net, like I feel that uh, Dilo kind of built himself um on his own from just getting an opportunity, and Kenny Atkinson did some questionable things in in moments where they needed to win, like benching okay. D'Angelo Russell, right. and uh, like benching him for like uh, I don't know, Phil Pinson or something like that, who's now Nick, of course. Okay. But, yeah, <laughs> but like Tiz is that rough, hard. Hold you accountable. Doesn't sleep, coach. He all cares. Right. All he cares about is basketball. He like mm -hmm. he doesn't really have that uh much much of any like a like he doesn't really have a family really. He, yeah. So yeah. his which makes the focus of him towards the basketball team more. Yeah. Um, he's more fo focused towards the basketball team. Right. And he shows all around the right guy. There's just and and you just look at his record. Yeah. Name name a coach that went in here. Right. I mean, I mean, winning records since like uh, Jeff Van Gundy. Jeff, well, I was gonna just say Jeff Van Gundy, who Coach Tibbs worked under for nine years. Right. I didn't even yeah, realize yeah. that he was working under him for nine years. So, yeah. I so initially I did I was leaning towards Kenny a more of a Kenny Atkinson. Yeah. Only only because I felt that he being a younger player, being a younger player, being a younger person, um, and with the league today being so player forward and being so much more focused on the player, I felt that he would have fit better with us. However, now that we have Tibbs and I'm looking into him, I realize that he is a hard nosed coach. All he does is coach. All he eats, drinks and sleeps is basketball. Not having the family could be a plus in that in that aspect, right? Um, yeah. I've heard I've heard he's one of those guys. Even when he wasn't coaching and didn't have a job, that he still he was, was one of those guys that still still looking at the tape, still looking at you know. So I think that he's definitely going to give the team um, a direction, and I also think he's going to be a great developmental coach, especially for our young team. So I'm looking at guys like Frank. If Frank stays with us, I don't know if he will or yeah. not. Um, but I'm looking at a lot of these young guys that I think Tibbs can come in and light some fire under their butt and get them moving because sometimes people, some of these guys just look, I mean, I know the losing and the losing also has to weigh, weigh on you, but sometimes they just look so lackluster and I'm like, come on if guys. If you look like, at Kevin we, Knox out there, he's like, yeah, he just yeah. seems like he's sleeping like he's, on the like he's, like, like, he's, like, like, like he's sleeping? <laughs> he should, yeah. He should, he should have been with uh, Je Jeff Hornacek. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> no, Jeff yeah. Hornacek wasn't sleeping. So I'm so sorry. Not Jeff. Jeff Hornacek was coughing <coughs> all the time. It was oh. Phil when it was Phil when Phil came. He oh, was the one who was yes. sleeping. Phil, and, Phil, and, Phil. Yeah, and I was I was so upset about that because you know obviously Phil, I mean amazing resume, right? And I think we just got him too late. He he was he was done. He when he came in he was done. It was almost unfair. Well, he, yeah, you he know. Was, he also he was like. I think it's different with Tibbs because Tibbs, like, he's much, he's younger than Phil was when he came, and he still yeah. has, he still definitely, I feel, Tibbs has around five years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I could, I I could, I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. Like, like, Phil, we just got too late, and it was just an unfortunate yeah. situation. It sure yeah. was. Yeah, but it Tibbs sure is, was. yeah, but Tibbs is the great guy, a great guy for our players and that. Like, our players, it's not like Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins where they're like a bunch of sleeping Oman, just play Fortnite and that and do all sorts of stuff like that. Right. I, but um, our young core, like, Mitch, he can be like that, but Mitch is a hard guy that just wants it. I think he plays with lots of hustle and heart, and that's mm -hmm. a guy that would 
do great under Tibbs, R.J. Barrett. Mm-hmm. I feel like he doesn't quit. He's never going to get defeated. He never yeah. – like, you never see RJ just sweep on the court and feel defeated. Um, at, 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 at Summer League, actually, I remember watching RJ and, um, you know, obviously his family is there. And this yeah. is the first time he's sort of playing on this big field. Not field, but, you know, in this big arena. And um, yeah. he, was, he wasn't hitting shots. And I remember, you know, even though he wasn't making the basket, his energy level never changed. Like he was still giving it his all. And I really like that about RJ. And that's why I feel that he is, I don't know if he's going to be super, super star status, but I think he's going to be a really good, solid piece for the Knicks. And I hope that he stays with us. One of the things that I don't like about the league, and I know it's part of basketball, so I get it, but I don't like that these players change teams so much. You know, I like when a player t- stays with a team for at least a nice, solid five years you know because then you can identify that person with that team and when they come and they say you know oh I really want to play for New York and I grew up being a Knicks fan you can really believe it you can't believe it when they're saying it one year and then next year they're gone you yeah. know so so I do I do think that um I do think that RJ is going to be here with us but uh, back to um Tim's a little bit he also has well they have also surrounded him with also really good developmental staff of assistant coaches. Mike you know, Woodson. Mike, well, well, Mike Woodson's got pushed so much further back at this point, but I was thinking more like um, Kenny Payne um, and then William Wesley. And then there's another guy that they just got, um, Bri- uh, last name is Bryant. Johnny Bryant. Um, Johnny Bryant. Um, who who, who might, who might be able to Donovan bring Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, right. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, play, they're playing tonight, right? Yeah, I think they are. Or I, th- I, th- I, think, I think it's the Mitchell and Murray show uh, tonight. They actually yeah, said, won. yeah, they actually said that the two of them, I think, have scored the most points. There's some record that they just beat, but they've scored the most points, I guess, in playoff games um, since, like, Michael Jordan, uh, since, since, since the night when Michael Jordan was playing. The two of them yeah. together have scored some ridiculous amount of points. So it's literally right now become the... Jamal Murray and Donovan Mitchell show. I would, uh, I would really like to see Donovan Mitchell come over here. Oh I think my he'd be God. In, I, I, feel... I think he would be a really nice fit for us. You know what I like about him too? Even though obviously he's a star player, he doesn't come with that star, the extra. The extra. Like, like you know how, how LeBron, how um, KD. He wants to bring his Kyrie. friends over. And he wants this. And- he he's almost he's almost like he's he's almost like this elite superstar, but like sort of quiet and humble in his place. Yeah, you know? that's what I was gonna say. He's a he seems like a down to earth guy. He he reminds me of like how Melo was. He was very like that. And I feel that Melo um, or like Donovan Mitchell, he's from the New York area, and I feel that's what's gonna really matter. Is you need guys that. Or like na- like native New Yorkers, people that watched the Knicks growing up and were close to um, the mm-hmm. team. They went to the garden every night. They knew what the energy was like in the room. Right. Like people like Tom Thibodeau, yeah. uh, like all sorts of people. I think R.J. Bear did that some, and also yeah. Donovan Mitchell. Like you see him, he's talking like, "Oh, I went to games so much when I was a kid." With yeah. the mix in that, yeah. Right. So yeah, he he'll be a nice piece for us. What I I don't want to, even though I know we need, I know we need a star, but yeah. I don't want us, but I don't want us to go chasing stars. If I don't know if I don't know if that, I don't know if that makes sense at all, but I don't yeah, want I know. us to just yeah, I don't I don't want us to be like like hungry for the star. Like I think we made some really good decisions after we didn't get KD uh, or Kyrie or Zion for that matter, I think we made a really good decision in getting all of those short contracts that right now give us a lot of cap space and trading opportunities, right? So I'm interested to know what the front office is discussing and what are they looking for? You know, are they looking to pick someone really, I mean, obviously you wanna pick someone good in the drop, but are they looking to move up and to get a higher pick? Because I don't think it's, I don't know if it's necessarily worth it in this draft. I think this draft is so um, fluid and sort of, so kind of open that, you know, pick the best person for your team, right, for, for your team right now. And yeah. are we trying to, obviously we're trying to win games, but are we trying to be, are we trying to be in the playoffs next year? 
or are we trying to develop what we have and get there in a couple years? You know, because they've done that before where, you know, you get these big star players, like when Melo, Melo and Amari came and then Amari ended up getting injured, right? And so then Melo was left sort of like by himself. And we spoke about this yesterday briefly, but how do, how do you feel about when Melo was here playing for us? How did I feel about Melo? It meant the world to me as like a Knicks fan from this generation. Melo was like a god to us Knicks fans. Mm -hmm. He was that guy that came in there. He was like the only star I really watched play in a Knicks uniform, which right. means the world to me. And right. I feel we just need that winning energy back. And for someone that like someone like me that uh, hasn't really seen lots of Knicks win, I just want to see a, a winning team. I don't right. care if we uh, just get a woman in the first round. If we can be like that every year, I don't care. I don't care. Like, <laughs> um, I, if pretend we were like the Portland Trailblazers, for example. Right. With right. like Damian Lillard, and they don't get far in the playoffs. There's no expectations of getting far in the pl playoffs. Maybe the most conference finals. Mm -hmm. Um. I'd be totally fine with that. I take that any, any, <laughs> any day over this roster. We're so, we're so desperate. We're so desperate. So, what do you think? You know, because being a, a Knicks fan and fan and always wearing Knicks gear, I get people on the street. I'm sure you do as well. People on the street come up to you and they either give you oh, a high yeah, five no. or, 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 well, no high five anymore. But or they're no, kind of like, oh, or they're like, oh, your team sucks, right? And or. You know, and then when, and when I start to talk to people and say, well, you know, we just got Thibodeau, we got this, we got that. The one thing people always say is, yeah, but who's the owner, right? Yeah. So, so, so that's always been this like sort of monkey on our back, that who's the owner, who's the owner? I personally feel that James Dolan has taken a big step back and has been allowing the front office, the head coach, whoever to do their thing. I don't think he's been that involved as he was in prior years. How do you feel about him? The fact that, you know, it, I mean, obviously the chance will sell the team, sell the team. They want to get him out of here. And people literally are like, New York is not going to do anything until James Dolan is gone. Do you feel that way also? Uh, I, I kind of do. I feel you. Um, I feel James Dolan is just a bad, like, um, he's not the best owner. And he definitely just, I just don't think he is not that good with like basketball decisions, uh, and I feel like I kind of like I feel that kind of way. But look, he was under um, us when we had Amari and Melo, mm -hmm. and we and we were winning. Like we had like I'm, we were winning. Uh, like it's not like we won a chip, but we were mm -hmm. winning. Right. So I feel it doesn't really matter, but I definitely feel that Dorn might be taking the team back, but we'll have to see. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he has another winning franchise. He has the New York Rangers. Yeah. They right. Won, and, yeah. and 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 they do and they do great. So to me, the same way that he operates with them should be the same way he operates with the Knicks. You know, he I just, know that he just might not <laughs> be the best basketball mind. But is he, is he really in there making decisions? I guess we don't really know that, right? If he's making decisions or if he's, what's, what strings he's pulling when it comes so, down to it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really know. So I, know I feel uh, Tom Thibodeau is pretty in charge with his staff and that. And what mm -hmm. I really like about Tiz is he, he just wants the best talent on his uh, coaching staff. Doesn't care about connections. Doesn't care mm -hmm. about all this uh, – weird stuff than connections and all that. I understand connections, but he just wants the winning the winning people. He wants the ta most talented people. Enough with connections, enough with this, enough with that, this agent, this, that, that, that. Just bring the bring the talented people in and mm -hmm. we'll win. Right. Well, I think that's they did always bring some... been the problem. Yeah. Right. They did. Bring... Well, see how I feel right now is that we do have a talented staff now, and there are yeah. some connections there because they have worked together in the past. Um, Tom Thibodeau and Leon Rose have had the connection. Um, yeah, they do. You know, but so but but, totally but 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 that but that but that's the that's the staff that's going to be doing the developing and the training and putting everything together. Now we yeah. need that staff in the players. 
now we need to see that we need to see players that um, are going to be able to live up to live up to that, and that these guys are going to be able to work, you know work with. Um, something I wanted to bring up, you know, because there's been no basketball at the Garden, obviously, and forever. But I brought you to the last Knicks game, the last game that yeah, they actually we, played in the Garden. Yeah, we went to the last Knicks game. Was, isn't that kind? Isn't that kind of crazy? We, we yeah, would have never, we would crazy. never thought that, right? I never thought that. And yeah. I don't know when we're going to be back, maybe not in a year or something like that, until a year or something like that. Yeah. Shout out to our good friends, uh, da Daniel from Nick Germany, Austria, you know? Yes, yes, yes. That was great. <laughs> yep. Sure yeah, we've been, yeah, we've, yeah, we've, yeah, we've, been, we've been in touch with those guys. Um, we, we had a, we had a yeah. great time with them. We bought, we bought about 60 fans from Germany. And again, we were yes. really, really lucky because we got to do, we did, we did Clyde's Wine and Dine. We actually went to a game on the Friday. No, I'm sorry. We didn't go to a game on the Friday. We went to a game earlier in the week, and then uh, Friday um, we watched a game at, at um, yeah, and then Clyde's Wine and Dine. We took them out to Rucker Park. We did the Brooklyn Bridge, and then Sunday we had the sweet, which is when you came yeah, to the game. Yeah, that, that and, was and, and, and that was and it was a great it was a great game. Who did they play? Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, Detroit. We played the Detroit. Pistons. Okay. Okay. And we it was a Pistons uh, won. Game. Talking yeah. about oh, that, oh yeah, we did win. <laughs> a free agent that. It's gonna be in this coming off season. Christian Wood. Do you want Christian Wood? Do I want who? Christian Wood from I, the Detroit Pistons. From Detroit yeah. Pistons. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of, I kind of like him. He seems like a good fit. We need a power forward. I right. know Ju I know people say Julius and that, but I just don't know if he's not the guy. Julius is not the well so far has I mean and it's been a good year now, good season, has not really shown us to be what I thought he was gonna be. I really thought he was gonna come here and sort of take on a more leadership role and more of a veteran's role as he's been in the league for a while. Obviously didn't see any of that and there was no development with his game and this is where I think you know a coach a coach like Tom Thibodeau could definitely help a lot there's several players on the team that could obviously benefit from him being a real hard ass and being kind of really being on that so you know I think uh, uh Julius Randall is, is one of those guys and the contract we have with him I believe it's up next year with uh, with our options I think we have a good contract with him that if he doesn't work out in the in the next year, that we can um we can. He get already it. has it. He already <laughs> has it. I, I'm I done with Randall. <laughs> I think we need to trade him. Okay. Also, uh, who do you want in free agency? A guy I'm targeting is Danilo Gallinari. I feel that he can shoot the free ball. He's like a stretch four. Sadly, that's one. That's one of Ter that's one of Terry's. Four. That's one of Terry's uh, favorite people, actually, Gallinari. Um, I don't really, really like him yeah. a lot. Yeah, when, I think you said you said Gallinari already posted. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, what uh, free agent is it? Bradley is Bradley Beal going to be a free agent? No, he's not. Uh, the he's only not. star free agent is Anthony Davis, but we already know his decision. Yeah, he's yeah he's he's not he he's um, not coming I, here. <laughs> I think we really need to target a stretch four, a mm -hmm. guy like also Lowry Markinen is yeah. also a great guy. He can shoot the free ball. He had a down year, but he was kind of injured, and the Bulls were just a mess this year. And but that's a different discussion, yeah. Right, 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 right. Uh, Christian Wood, as we said, definitely a great target. And to come off the bench, I, I really, I really want him back. Ennis Cantor. He says you he mentioned that. Up. You mentioned that. I don't know how the Knicks fans feel about Ennis Cantor. He's He's so like gung ho um, everywhere that he goes. He, I mean, he he does have great energy. Um, you know, big man. Um, he's just you know, relatable. He's down to earth. He's relatable with the fans. He loves New York, and I know he loves New York. It's just I think he loves. I, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Ennis Cantor loves every city he goes to. He kisses the ground and says, "Yes, I love it here. This is where I want to be." So he's one of those guys well, that I was kind of talking about. Well, he's kind of one of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> here's the thing. It's not his like. I think he kind of, he wants to stay in New York. It's just mm -hmm. they. It's just they wait like they they waved him in that and he um he had all the right to be mad at Fizdale now. At the end of the day, I feel 
he is that type of guy that's the fan favorite. I feel that he he actually really loved New York, and not everyone that uh, loves it here is always going to be here. There's going right. to be some change in the rosters. People come and go, and that's okay. It's not it's not his fault that he got a uh, waived. I think he yeah. He, Right. It's not like I mean, he said. Right. Obviously, it's not like he signed with someone else or requested right. a trade. Totally. I mean, obviously, people come and go. That's what happens in the NBA. But what I would like to see for us as the Knicks is to at least see a core three or four guys that are the Knicks. You know, so if it is that it's Mitchell and it's RJ and then two other pieces we know are going to be here with us for the long term. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's kind of what I want to see. I, I, I want, I want to see that. And I want to see, I want to see the development in these guys. I want to see what the front office is looking at as who they want to bring over here. Because like I said, we, we do have the cap space. We do have um, some, tr- some trade options. We, I mean, some uh, lot- lottery pick options that we can trade around. And, um, and we have a young team. We have a young team. We have a whole new regime at this point, right? Because we've got a whole, I mean, uh, Mil- 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 Mills is Perry. gone. Mills yes. is gone. Perry, well, the, the, the funny thing is, so Mills is gone, right? Scott Perry is still here, but I'm watching the rest of the roster they're putting around Scott. And I'm like, Scott must be feeling a little bit lost right now. Like, wait a minute, all these new people are coming in, you know? So I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens this season. And it's going to be such a weird season. I, I don't even know when they're going to play the first game. I don't know if yeah. they're even going to have, at this point, it looks like there's are not going to be any fans. I can't see how they're going to do that yeah. just yet, you know? So we just got to hold tight. Maybe half of the arena. Oh, no. I have yeah. no idea. I mean, I mean they, yeah. have to find, they have to find a way to recoup some money as well. So yeah, they're going to have to start and thinking of like, getting creative with ideas of what they yeah, can do. Yeah, I feel... Uh, Scott Perry, he, he's a, um, yeah, I feel that he did not totally build that roster. That mm-hmm. was around Steve Mills and David Fisdale. I feel that mm-hmm. was Mills and Fisdale. Right. And I, he was, he was okay. He was the one guy that I feel like I always, I always liked him. And I knew that he, he seemed like he wasn't about that whole culture and that like mm-hmm. stuff. Like, I just, I just don't feel that you should always be talking about that. Just build a good basketball team, and that's it. I know, um, it's not about – like, stability comes – if you're winning, um, then you're going to have stability. Mm-hmm. If you're not winning, you're going to need to change the team. There's clearly something wrong. I don't care right. if you're a young, rebuilding team. Something needs to change if you're not winning. Something. Well, they've been changing Close and changing and changing. That, that's, that's all they have been doing is changing. Um, so none of these guys have really had an opportunity. I mean, who's the oldest player on the – when I say the oldest player, not age-wise, but the oldest player on the Knicks right now is Frank right. Milikina, which, but, which makes no sense. And you know, you know I love Frank, and I will support yeah. Frank wherever he goes, but I completely expected him to be gone – a while ago, every every time anything, any rumblings came up of trades or anything, I always thought that he was going to be gone. And I'm shocked that he's still here. I love that he's still here. But I do know, um, deep down, I sort of feel that Frank would do so much better on any other team. And I, I, hate, I hate saying that. But um, now that we have Tibbs being a developmental coach, he could actually be a really good piece for Frank. He could be yeah, a really, and a really I feel good Frank, Frank is going nowhere anytime soon. And I feel Tiz will develop Frank. And if Frank can't develop, I feel you can't blame that on Tibbs because Tibbs came – Tibbs is a top defensive coach. If Frank and that's, doesn't and, and, and that's, develop – that's And that's what Frank plays. So Tibbs should love Frank, actually. Tibbs should love yeah. him. If Frank yeah. doesn't turn into like a – like a six-man type player mm-hmm. or like a – for example, let's uh, say like a Tony Allen in the mm-hmm. next um, year or two, I feel it's kind of like, yeah. I said, to, uh, um, I know that's a little of a too bar, um, high of a bar, but it's actually kind of not. It's not, I feel that he can develop Frank into like that type of player. If right. he was able to develop like a 
Jimmy Butler and Wall Gang, I have hope they can de- develop Frank. Yeah. Talk, talk about Jimmy Butler and the and the Miami Heat. Oh my goodness! Did you watch the game last night at all? Oh yeah. Yeah, he fantastic. Fire fan- right oh. now. Yeah, he's on. He's definitely he's te- he's definitely stepped up a notch. Um, back to Frank. Frank has seen seems to be prone with uh, that groin injury. You know, it's like he plays a few games and then has this groin injury. The thing about Frank, what I've seen is that when he plays with confidence, he plays a different game. He plays a different game he he comes out with a different kind of energy and it's like he's he's sure of himself the thing is frank is a very um almost like mathematical player you know if you tell him to do something he's going to do it which is why i think under tibbs could be really good for him because he's going to have the direction that he needs the coaching that he needs and hopefully some of the playing time he needs um i remember how many times fisdale would um, keep putting him to sit and i'd be so upset because i'd be like you know he was just now kind of getting on that uh, getting on a groove and then you put him to sit down. So I would like to see him play a little harder, play with more confidence because Frank can make the shot. Like he can make the shot. I, I, I watch him and I watch like the angles he's going at and his, his, his release. He can make the shot. He just has to keep practicing and practicing and he has to be confident about his shot. Even if he hasn't made the last four or five, he still has to be confident about his shot. And that's something that RJ has um, with his shot is that he's still confident about the shot, whether or not he didn't make it the last few times. Yeah, one thing I noticed, he's definitely gotten better with this as time has progressed with his time in the NBA. But Frank, like, when he shoots, like, I think, like, you'll see him sometimes, he'll just stop with the ball for a second. He'll be like, he's 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 because he's hesitating because because he's not because he's not he hesitates. I see it all the time. He he stops. You, You just said it. He stops. And sort of does this, like he's not sure what to like do. He he's has, like he's like slow motion shooting. Yeah. but you don't it's, it's, know. He's like, am I gonna pass it? Or am yes, I gonna it? it's so yeah. that so that's confidence to me because he's almost like he it's almost like he's second guessing himself. Like he's second guessing, should he throw he's the ball or should? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I feel he just needs to play a little more freely. And that's something that I feel Tibbs can work on with him and just uh, let him do that. Yeah. As long as like, he just has to be prepared because if he's going to be overthinking, then you're not going to be able to yeah. – you're going to get blocked or something like that, and then you're not going to be able to get back on the next possession. Yeah, you, 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 can't, you can't overthink in a game like basketball. You have to know what you're going with and just go with it. E- even if it might be wrong – you ever heard the expression "be wrong and strong"? Like yeah. you just kind of have to, you just kind of have to go with it. Like whatever, if that if was you, your decision, yeah. go with it. Yeah. If you miss a shot, you get back on the next possession. You exactly, go, exactly. You go at it, and then you go back yep. up the court and make that shot. Yeah. Yep. Um, I want to make sure that whenever we can go back to the garden, whoever knows when that yeah. is, that we have to make sure we go together. So oh, yeah. I mean I, I mean I, I, I mean I know we'll be in touch, but I, we have to make sure we're gonna get your mom. We're gonna get your mom. I know you always drag her along with you. We're gonna get your yeah. mom. I'll get Terry and and the four of us or whoever else is you yeah. know, gonna be able to come with us. Um, yeah, we'll get the whole Knicks gang. Yeah. Also, want to just uh, I just remembered um, condolences to Anthony. Um, oh yeah, and, I, and his sister, his sister Gianna, and I know it was a really long battle that they were going through with her. Yeah, and, it's a really hard you know, situation. And yeah, I, I feel for him and Anthony's and our good friend of mine. And yeah, so yeah, it's hard. So just, just, send, send, just sending out some Nick's love for him. Yeah, also, he's part um, of Nick's family, in, in you his, know. Exactly, exactly. So I saw you had a nice big celebrity guest on the other day. How did you, oh. uh, how did you score that? T- um, t- Chris t- Childs, yeah. Yes, yes. How did you get Chris uh, Childs on? So, the Chris Childs thing. So, uh, we had we did an interview with. Uh, I was on a roundtable thing with our um, Nick Sami fan. Shout out to yes. Jen Jazz, you know. Yes, yes, Jen Jazz. And, uh, um, we were talking about the Knicks, Chris Childs. We were talking about the new coach of the New York Knicks, uh, Tom Thibodeau, who was a candidate at the time mm-hmm. before he was a the actual head coach in Knicks. Right. And um, Chris Childs, Chris is a huge fan of Tom Thibodeau. Mm-hmm. So we definitely talked about that. And 
yeah, so we got him on. So it was right after Tibbs got hired. Okay. I remember talking to him that Saturday. And then well, how well, how yeah. did you make that first connection? That's what I'm asking. How did what do you mean? What do you mean? I remember talking to him on Saturday. How did that even happen? That's what I want to know. <laughs> um, how was, was that? Was that through through OmniFan? Yeah, yeah, through okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, they okay, gave gotcha. me that uh, opportunity, and yeah, okay, gotcha, and gotcha. It went from there, and yeah, he he's amazing. And uh, shout out to Chris if you're yeah. watching this, yeah. I definitely want to have him back on the show as well as oh, you. Oh, cool, cool, cool. He must, he must have been so impressed with you because I think anyone that meets you and hears the knowledge that you're yeah. spewing is like, who is this kid? Like, wow. Yeah. So that's cool. He's, that's really cool. He's who grows in the next up and coming person. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So, I'm honored. I'm honored to be on your show. I'm honored to be a friend of yours. Um, always. You know, I think I may be seeing you guys sometime next week. I will keep you posted. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, go Knicks as, as usual. New go regime. Knicks. New regime. Let's see what happens with new, the changing. New hope. New hope. I, I, yeah. I feel like we have the changing of the guard again. It's right? different with... this time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, peace out. Bye. We'll talk. Bye. Bye.